backing job, folks. Yeah, it wasn't that good, actually. All right, so uh, you're probably wondering where the heck my other kayak is, because the thumbnail said uh, my two dream kayaks, and I've just got one here. Well, uh, I gotta get it. It's in there. Nobody steal my camera, please. I gotta do some major re-rigging of this trailer to fit both these on there. All right, that was heavy. But of course, before we start rigging these things to be my favorite bass kayaks ever, I've gotta fit both of them on the trailer. And I'm gonna be honest, my new kayak is a lot wider than I thought it was gonna be. Here we go. You know what they say, where there's a drill, there's a way. And this is gonna be way harder than I thought. Those are not the same head. Why do we use Phillips for those in square for these? What the heck? Color me confused. Well, the trailer has now been stripped of the two I-4s that were kind of holding the kayaks in place back when I had two Bonafides. Now that I've got two Natives, I've got to figure out either putting those back on in different spots or just hoping that I can strap it down and they're not going to move. The second option, probably not the safest, but it may be what we have to do today. Ah, crap. Well, I've reached the uh, decision that I think I'm just gonna strap these things on there with no braces underneath them and hope we can make it home. Because if we can, I can probably figure out a good way to re-rig this trailer to fit both kayaks. And my brain is kind of fried right now. So let's get them on there. Just so big. <sighs> yeah, I need help. I gotta get the assistance of an employee. Without the wheel system on there, you can't lift this thing onto a trailer because the, the rudder yeah. scratches on the, on the ground. So we're gonna put this one on the, on the left side. I think I need to build the trailer wider. Good to know. Let's get the other one on there. Okay, well, at least they fit, but not great. Alrighty, appreciate it. Thank you. Should we get, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay. Good to see you. Did the camera get that? Nothing like a good handshake fist bump debacle. I don't like that. Dang it. Well, not proud of it, but it's, uh, it's sturdy enough, so we'll see y'all at home. We're off to see the wizard. Well, howdy. We have reached the part of the video that I think is really fun, and that is we get to take these two kayaks and turn them into my dream kayak setup. Now, you're probably wondering, because I didn't talk about it a few uh, minutes ago in the video, what these two kayaks are. So these are both native watercraft. I've worked with native for a few years now. This is the Slayer Propel Max 10. It is a 10 foot kayak. And for a while it was the, as far as the shorter version goes, the shorter uh, flagship kayak native has had for bass fishermen. And this is the brand new upgraded, like kind of the new flagship. And it is the Titan Propel 10.5. And as you can tell, it is a bigger kayak, it is a deeper kayak. And I'm excited to turn this into my main kind of lake, bigger body of water kayak and this will be a very cool kayak that y'all haven't seen much of on the channel at least this style of fishing and that is the creeks the rivers the dump it wherever i want to that's going to be this kayak here and so the first step is going to be taking all my electronics my live scope my cables my batteries and transitioning them from this kayak to this one that way i can turn this into a lake kayak and this into a beat the snot out of a kayak and hopefully we can make awesome videos in both types of kayaks and we've enlisted the assistance of a very helpful individual who's a part of my family. Hey, get in here. Dad. Uh-oh, he's using the restroom, as usual. It's my dad. Let's go. <laughs> and like I said, we have to take all the wires from this kayak and move them to that one. So I'm not gonna bore y'all with all the details, but that's what we have to do. So my posture looks horrible. Yeah, though you, it's not really a sexy thing to be unscrewing. Bend, bending over, unscrewing something. You can just get this out of the way. I got, we gotta take this whole plate off. There's more coiled in there with, a, with, a, with a zip, not zip ties, what do you call it? We have some wire. I guess at some point we had coiled these wires up to hide them inside the kayak. So I gotta untwisty tie them to get it through the original plate. All right, live scope transducer and pole disconnected. Yeah, we need to cover this hole. Hello. And now I've got to take this uh, plate here that had the live scope cable going through it. And again, this kayak is a non-electronics kayak. So I'm going to screw this back on and we got to find something to plug the, uh, the, plug the hole so water can't get in the kayak hole. And I'm sure we'll find a plastic scrap somewhere. Let's take that off. There we go. And those two cables, I believe, went up here. Power, power. Okay. And then screw this one back on. And of course, find something to plug the hole. And while I've been doing that, my dad's been putting the black box for LiveScope in the new kayak. Good job, dad. Uh-oh, not, not the best drill bit, I guess. 
Well, maybe we should have bought the $74 one, although they sell them on Amazon for much cheaper, so we'll get by. Oh, dang it. This kayak's got too much going on. So we decided that for safety's sake, we should take the internal rod tubes out of, uh, or at least slide them out of the port side, starboard side of the kayak before we drill the hole, which he's about to do. That drill bit stinks. Yeah, that's best for this. So we have snaked one cable, but then realized we don't have any string to run through. So we're, <laughs> we're using a power cable as we, as we string these things. Because again, we're keeping the black box back there, but we have to get power to the black box and the black box to the fish finder that's gonna be up here at the bow. I feel like this one's easier to rig. It is. Is it because it's taller, you have more space? It's a big area underneath there. Okay. And we have this big hole here, opening here that that doesn't have. If I'm scoping, I'm like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be there, yeah. Keep, keep pulling, I got, I got a lot of cable. They built these for bass boats, not 10 foot kayaks. We messed up folks, we gotta put, oh, I'll show you. So this here is my live scope transducer on this arm. Realize that it, the cable needs to go in this slot here, not around this side, so gotta pull it out. Okie doke. Update here, the black box, which is behind the seat here, the swiveling seat on the new Titan. Uh, we have all three cables going towards their necessary destinations. So these are the four cables we have coming from various places in the kayak that are going to be used up here in the front. So I've got the two Garmin cables that are gonna to go to my fish finder right here, my 93SV, and then I've got power for both the black box and that same Garmin fish finder. So let me get the drill. I believe this is for cables. Got that off, now I've got to, ah man, almost gotta find a way to zip tie these together here, I think. Regardless, this can go back on there. All right, there we go. Love it. We decided to bring the old kayak, AKA the river rat outside. That way we have more room to work on the big kayak. Well, we are all wired up and ready to go as far as electronics are concerned. Now we have to put the, what's called the sidekick, it's a wheel system, because this kayak is so heavy and the rudder is on the back. You basically, unless you had someone with you all the time, you can't transport this thing even on and off of the trailer itself without having a wheel system. So uh, I know the other kayak came with that, this one did not. So we've got to basically put a, a hard bracket here, here, and then a bar that goes across that the wheels clip into, and then when I'm on the water, I can actually put them up uh, kind of in this general vicinity right here. So that's the last thing I think we can do today before my power pole, the new micro anchor gets here, and my uh, graph mount. So we're, we're getting there. Take the blue tape right there. Yep, that's true. We're kind of, we're, we're kind of splitting hairs here, but we wanna make sure it's perfect. So what I can actually, I'd actually kind of rather the wheel hit the edge of the kayak a little bit. Okay. So all the, all the way in. I wanna check sure to make sure your wheel, your wheel Fits well. Wow, okay. Gates of hell will not prevail against that one. <sighs> hey, at this point in the video, everybody comment your favorite dad joke. Since dad's here, do you have a favorite one? He's got a, li he's got a rotating list of dad jokes. Snake it would a bitch you is a big one. It's, it's hard to come up with this. Cut it, cut it three times and it's still too short. It's still too short. That's another one. You almost can't pressure a dad to do a dad joke. You know, it's gotta come out you gotta random. You gotta give me a category. <laughs> Two cannibals eating a clown. One says, hey, does this taste funny to you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, comment your dad's favorite dad joke below. Or if you're a dad, what you use. There we go, last step which is getting on the Active Captain app to install any updates because I'm gonna be honest, I haven't used this Garmin Fish Finder in what has to be like five, six months. So I guarantee this and the black box both have updates of various kinds. And, and again, I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna be a live scoper on this kayak. I just, I like to have it to tell where the structure is, where the open water is. 100% as a learning tool so I can understand and learn the bodies of water in the kayak even faster. And after all this, we got a few more steps to go. So we'll see you guys the next day. Dun, 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 dun. We're done, kind of, sort of. Let's look at it. So it's probably been a few weeks since I filmed the last part of this video, but we finally have my two kayaks, I would say ready to go. They're not quite fully customized for how I want them to be, but they are ready to go as far as my lake kayak, so I can go out there, catch some fish, film for you guys, and my river, my 
put it wherever I want kayak. So first, let's start with the brand new Titan X. Y'all saw the whole rigging process. Since the last part of the video, I got my new micro anchor from PowerPole. Uh, I have the spike over here. Just the, 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 really the only way to stop yourself besides a traditional anchor and that, that's not practical for you know easy, easy filming and usage. So got the micro anchor here on the back and this kayak comes with the holes pre-drilled for that. We moved the, the, I think this is the old Yak Attack black box um, from that kayak to this one. I want to keep this in that kayak, which means I have to get the new one. So I'm going to get in touch with the Yak Attack and get the, uh, the new black box. And also I can attach a camera pole to the side of the new one. It's got the cool railings. That's why I said we're not quite done yet, but we're almost there. And I also put the sidekick system on so the wheels can uh, help me get down. And then as far as the front goes, I got a bridge here from, I believe it's uh, Dugout Bait and Tackle. They kind of sell like two parts as one. And so this bridge, which again, I'm not sure why it has a measuring stick because with stuff on top, you can't measure your fish on top of it. But I have two things. I have my Garmin uh, graph here, my 93 SV. That's just for live scope and mapping, that kind of stuff. Um, and I screwed two holes in the bottom on the back. These holes were not there, but I wanted to fit it exactly centered on my bar here. I mean, like as far as kayaks go, it's, it's sturdy as can be. And then on this side here, I have my original ram mount that this thing sat on in that kayak. And I'm actually gonna put a, a nice sturdy camera mount for this or maybe another nice camera that I get. That way when I'm kayak fishing, I can actually show you guys uh, a, a much better view than just a GoPro angle. Uh, so that's kind of in the works. I am gonna take this thing off though and just clamp a GoPro onto this for today. And then I don't even know if I showed you guys this, but I've got, just the two batteries in here, uh, just in dry storage. One is for live scope and one is for my fish finder. So I would say we are 78% of the way there. Not quite, but uh, we're good enough to go on the water and test this thing out, see how she feels, see how she runs, and of course, test out the new swivel seat and all the new features this kayak has. So let's get her in the water and test it out. Let's get, uh, let's get your kayak first. It's down near the water. Not really heavy. Yes. Here we go. Oh, no wheels today because we have Taylor, but uh, it's still a dang heavy kayak. Whew. Time to get all the stuff. Kayak fishing is a process. All right, dude. That's a setup right there. It is a setup, I know. Maybe I'll be a kayak pro. I'll be the kayak Van Dam. That's what I'll be. All right, dude. And Taylor is here to take a thumbnail, so he gets to fish too. The maiden voyage of the new yak. It's a heavy boy, but it should be stable. Okay, get in first. Oh yeah, holy cow, this thing is beefy, wow. Let's go ahead and get our drive system in. Love it. But the cool thing about kayak fishing is that once you get in, you're in. You're locked in, ready to go. And I think I'm a little too far from the pedals. But I can slide that forward. And we are off to see the wizard. Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if we're going to catch any today, but honestly, that's not the entire point. The point for me is just to get the maiden voyage on this thing, feel good about fishing in it, and yeah, we're stable. This is this thing feels really smooth. If we end up catching one, you know what? That is an absolute bonus, but we're going to plug around here for a while. Hopefully the wind doesn't cause a uh, comedy of, of errors, but I'm excited. Let's do it. Put my power pull switch right here behind my water bottle. I think I like the location of it. Fishing, power pull. Yeah, feels good. Honestly, it would have been better right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it after today. And we have our fish finder on. Agree. All right. Let's put that live scope cable in. Heck yeah. Look at that, folks. We're scoping. My whole goal is really just to start feeling comfortable in this kayak, which I can tell I already do. This thing feels awesome. Water is 68.7 up here. So that means the fish should be doing their thing, no doubt. If they're not spawning up here, they don't exist up here, which is actually one of the rumors I've heard that they don't exist up on the northern side of this lake as far as bass go. So we're gonna try to disprove that today. But the first thing I wanna test is the brand new swivel seat to get to your oh my goodness that's cool to get back to my tackle back here grab myself a rod you know what though i should probably i'm gonna get to a better spot and power pull down but i'm gonna get myself this rod right here that i was expecting today to go to a little honey hole that i've been wanting to hit for a while 
we pull up to the ramp, Taylor and I, and they have dropped the water level like five feet and the grass edge is really no longer in the water. Maybe it's like a foot, six inches beneath the water. I didn't feel like launching there and potentially ruining a day. And first I'm gonna put on that swim, that spinnerbait that I've been loving, the turtle back. It's just a little 3 8 ounce spinnerbait in the Indiana blades. And we actually have like rod pods in this boat, but I really don't know how the heck this is supposed to work with a rod that's longer than, you know, five foot. Well, you know what? Wow, it fits. That's astounding. This kayak's got rod pods. Test out the standing. That's pretty good. See if there's one on this same tree that all the guys have hung their bobbers on. Probably not. All right, super cool. Power pull up, we good? All right. I always like to put my power pull down for like a second, just to make sure the spike can't jump out on me and fall in the water. That rod pod is cool. Dang. It's a six, uh, seven foot rod. Okay, so it can fit a seven foot. I want to catch one so bad on the spinnerbait. I want to catch one so bad. Again, to make myself feel comfortable, I'm going to fish sitting down for a little bit, and then I'm going to fish standing up for a little bit, and then I'm going to try making different casting angles for a little bit, just to see how good I can really start feeling with this kayak. This kayak, believe it or not, steers better than the smaller one. Would not have guessed that. I'm gonna put the rod on this side so we don't catch any sticks as I flip. <sighs> I wanna catch one flipping so bad. Although, to be honest, I wanna catch one more on a hybrid hunter, which I feel like I'm gonna be able to do here in a few minutes once we get to the bridge. Now, one thing I haven't mastered yet on these kayaks is reverse turning. See, the problem with a lot of these bushes here that are flooded is that there's, there's too much of it. So I wanna see like really isolated pieces or maybe one that's really shallow and big or really deep and big. It's just with it all being kind of muddy, silty bottom and they actually have room to get behind the stuff. I gotta catch one on the spinner bait that's kind of in the transition probably from pre-spawn to post-spawn, getting ready to spawn back behind that stuff. But I can't, I can't get myself even in a kayak I have my lure behind all this stuff. There's too much. I kind of want the water level to drop another two feet. And then all this stuff here would be really, really juicy. Man, let's see this. There's a tree right here that is kind of by itself as far as what the rest of the trees in the area look like. It's very, it's very unique. And it's hardwood, so that means bass could spawn on the edge of it. So I'm going to stand up. Look, I can totally, I can totally move. Let me move this. My both feet on this side of the kayak. That's awesome. Oh, well, not the best cast. This is this is not the right combo for what I'm doing. And I also need to peg my weight. Today was just a get out there and test things out day. I'm, I'm not really prepared. And nothing there. All right, folks, you know what time it is. We are at a bridge with rip wrap in stained water in the pre-spawn spawn time period. And that is one lure and one lure only for me. It was exactly two years ago from filming this video, two, two years and one day ago, that I caught 30 pounds for my best five and a 10 pounder on this lake, on this bait. Now, one thing I find interesting is that even in the, the 10 minutes I've worked this bridge, I really feel like I'm being more efficient with my casts and like my casting angles than I was on a bass boat doing the same thing. Now, when it comes to picking apart structure and making good flips, it's harder to do in a kayak for sure. But I feel like I've actually understood more about this bridge just by the way my crankbait hits the bottom and the casting angles than I did from a bass boat. So I'm kind of enjoying this so far. I wanna catch one, but I'm enjoying it. And I'm also not as worried about hitting my kayak up on the rocks like I would be my bass boat. So I can actually parallel, I think a lot more effectively from this platform. But the water temps dropped to 61.7. So, which honestly should make this bite even better. If the water's getting colder as I get toward the main lake, there should be more and more pre-spawners, at least in theory. But like I said, I've been told this area doesn't hold many bass. So we'll see. Let's make one more. All right, that's it. That's the only cast I need. And now I'm gonna fish down the windy side of this edge. How is there not even a white bass 
on these points. That's crazy. So frustrated. This is so confusing. What the heck? There's got to be bass that live up here. All right, we're going to go like 75 more yards to the next opening. And then if we don't get nothing, I mean, I could, you know, try a different lure. But I know if it's this time of year and there's bass up shallow, I've been to this lake too many times to be tricked. All right, a few more casts. We've made it all the way to the end. No bites, not even a lost fish. So color me confused. Either my buddy is right or the fish just didn't bite today. Either way, I'm probably not gonna return to this area of this lake. And if you're from this area, you're probably agreeing with me or you know something I don't and you're like, good, stay away. I'm not gonna lie to y'all and say that I had a whole lot of fun because it didn't catch any fish, but I am glad maiden voyage is over. Didn't flip nothing. Taylor has stories to tell. He went that way to fish and some dude that also recently moved from New York flipped his kayak and probably should not have been a seaworthy fella, but he was on the water, lost his phone, uh, probably lost his manhood as well. And, and Taylor was able to save him. So I'm glad I brought Taylor today. And now is the, I'm trying to figure out the process of how I put two kayaks on this thing and get kind of get through the the uh, my brain y'all know what i'm trying to say i'm trying to you know, maybe you don't know what i'm trying to say because i don't know what i'm trying to say i want to efficiently get these things on every time and it, i'm struggling my brain i'm hungry but even though today wasn't ultra exciting i am excited for the partnership between myself trf and native uh, and bonafide their whole family super cool brand so happy to be a part of their family I'm excited. We're going to do two kayak videos guaranteed to you guys a month in one of these two kayaks. If it's like I said, a river or like a super hard to get to body of water, I'm going to put the wheels on the small kayak and not worry about live scope, not worry about fancy, you know, fish finders and, and rod holders and rod pods. But if we're going to go in a big body of water, maybe a private water fishing lake or a lake like we have behind me, we're going to put the Titan 10.5 to work. But just like every kayak day, there's a whole lot of prep to get on the water and prep to get off. So I'm gonna say sayonara to you guys. If you wanna see my last kayak video and my next one, they're gonna be up here in the corners. My name's Tyler. We'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.